Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Jean-Marc Voyadzis. I'm a neurosurgeon specializing in both brain and spinal surgery. And what I'm going to talk to you about today is an operation called anterior lumbar inner body fusion. I'll review spinal anatomy. I'll discuss the reasons for which we consider lumbar fusion surgery. I'll also go over expected recovery and possible risks and complications. This is a model of the lumbar spine. The lumbar spine is the lower segment of the spinal column, and most of us have five lumbar vertebrae that we number from top to bottom, lumbar one all the way down to lumbar five, and then this is the tailbone that we call the sacrum. We have discs that are natural shock absorbers between each and every vertebra, and then behind the discs lies the spinal canal, which houses and protects the spinal nerves. A lumbar fusion operation is an operation designed to cause two vertebra to fuse together. And by fusion, we mean that we want to create a situation inside the body where the body can grow bone to connect the bony vertebra so that they fuse together. Typically, the hardware consisting of titanium screws into the vertebra above and below are there to stabilize the vertebra to allow them to heal together. The typical indications for a fusion operation of the lower back can be degenerative disc disease when the discs are so severely worn out that can typically manifest as significant low back pain. Another indication for fusion is if a patient has suffered multiple disc herniations requiring prior surgery. One of the ways to prevent the disc from ever herniating again is to fuse the vertebra above and below it. Another typical indication for lumbar fusion surgery is a malalignment of the vertebra that we typically call a spondylolisthesis, which means an anterior translation of one vertebra with respect to the other. Anterior lumbar inner body fusion utilizes usually about a two inch incision below the belt line on the left side of the abdominal compartment. Most surgeons work with a general surgeon who performs the approach for us. Once the general surgeon achieves access to the anterior portion of the lumbar spine, we then remove the disc that is typically worn out, replace the disc by inserting what we call an intervertebral prosthetic device that contains bone grafting material to stimulate bone growth. And then we have the options of placing an anterior plate and screws or inserting screws through slots of the intervertebral graft in order to affix the graft to the vertebra above and below to allow for the inner body fusion that we talked about. That operation typically takes several hours. It's usually about two to three nights in the hospital. There's a moderate degree of abdominal pain and back pain for one to two weeks requiring narcotic medication and muscle relaxants. Every patient, of course, is very different in how they respond to pain. An important variable is how much pain you were in before surgery and whether or not you were taking pain medication before surgery. That can dictate or prolong the recovery. Most of us recommend some form of activity limitations for six weeks, often with the use of a lumbar brace to minimize certain movements of the lower back. And then typically after six weeks, the brace comes off and we begin some physical therapy to regain range of motion and strengthen the core. One of the advantages of the anterior lumbar inner body fusion technique is that we have broad access to the disc space without having to work around the nerves that are located behind the disc. And as a result of that, we can place a very large intervertebral graft that can significantly re-expand disc height, help to restore a healthy curvature of the lower back and increase the potential for fusion. We can typically perform that operation at L5-S1, the bottom disc of the lumbosacral spine. It can also be performed at L4-5 and even at levels above, although this is done less frequently. On occasion, the anterior lumbar fusion is complemented by a second procedure to place screws in the back if indicated. The typical risks of that operation include the usual risks of infection, which can range from 1 to 5 percent. There is a risk of bleeding from this operation because we work around the important blood vessels that provide blood flow to the lower extremities. The aorta comes down typically in the middle of the spine and then it splits at the L4, L5 level. So at L5-S1, we work between the blood vessels that have bifurcated and at the levels above, we typically have to retract the blood vessels away from the disc space in order for us to achieve the removal of the disc and the insertion of the graft. There is a risk of blood vessel injury from this approach. It's usually less than 5%. If there is an injury, then typically it requires repair of the blood vessel wall 
but it could cause some degree of bleeding, sometimes enough bleeding that patients require a blood transfusion. It's extremely rare to see profound or catastrophic bleeding from this approach, but typically if patients have had a lot of prior abdominal surgery, then we usually avoid an anterior approach and we consider the alternative approaches. There are very rare risks of injuring the organs within the abdominal compartment, such as the bowel, the kidneys, the ureter, the bladder. The risks of organ injury of that kind is typically less than 1%. Occasionally, patients can develop hernias as a result of this surgery, which is also very uncommon. There is a risk of spinal nerve injury from this approach, which is typically less than 5%, but a spinal nerve injury can mean leg pain or foot pain or weakness or tingling or numbness or even paralysis. As with any fusion surgery, there is a possibility that the vertebra do not fuse together over time. There are several risk factors for that. Patients who have a history of tobacco consumption are at significant risk of not healing properly, and we often recommend complete cessation of tobacco consumption prior to any consideration of lumbar fusion surgery. If the fusion fails, then patients can develop recurrent pain. They will often require additional surgery. Another potential risk that we see in young adult males is that of retrograde ejaculation. There are very fine nerves that travel over the anterior or front portion of the spine in the area of the operative intervention. And there is a small risk of retrograde ejaculation, which is typically around one to three percent, which can lead to infertility. And it's important you have a discussion with your treating doctor about that risk if you're a male and concerned about the possibility of infertility. That's it for anterior lumbar interbody fusion surgery. I hope you found this helpful, insightful, and educational.